Welcome to today's edition of the Rush 24-7 Podcast. I think this may be the scandal of scandals. It certainly is in the top three, and it is fascinating to me, not surprising in the least, that it's being ignored, especially being ignored by the publications that broke it. They broke it, and that's it. Washington Post, TheHill.com, maybe the New York Times a bit, but now you have to dig deep to find it. You won't find it on USA Today. You won't find it on Yahoo News. You will not find the story anywhere where millions of Americans get their news. Greetings, my friends, and welcome. It's Rush Limbaugh here at the EIB Network. The telephone number is 800-282-2882, and the email address, lrushbo at eibnet.us. I need to conduct a test here, folks, just a minute. When I just finished saying what I said, Dawn and Snurdly looked at each other with perplexed facial expressions, as though one of you didn't know what I was talking about. Is that true? It, it is true. One of them doesn't even know what I'm talking about. When I first heard about this last night, I lit up. I got, I went through every emotion because, A, I knew it. I knew from the get-go that this was contrived and made up, and it was opposition research, and I had said so numerous times. And then I got livid when I saw how little relative interest in it there was in the drive-by media last night. I turned on cable TV. I couldn't find anything on it. So I came in here today, and I'm watching the drive-by media on cable TV, and there's scant mention of it here and scant there. But clearly, to the denizens of the swamp, it isn't that big a deal. Let me tell you what it is. You know the Trump dossier. Let's review the Trump dossier, shall we? This is the Golden Showers dossier. Among many things, this bit of intel... Remember that the Trump dossier was presented to President Trump and to us as intelligence that had been produced by a combination of intelligence agencies. One of the stories we got was that the intel people put this together after Trump openly said he didn't want a daily brief from the intel people. He was smart enough to remember from day to day what they had told him. So one of the stories we got was that they prepared this dossier that was knowingly false to demonstrate to him the kind of things that could show up every day that he needed to know about. And they did present it to him. It was James Comey who presented the Trump dossier to Trump, and that then made it qualify as news. That opened the floodgates permitting the drive-by media to report on it. The Trump dossier was put together by a guy named Christopher Steele, and he was hired by Fusion GPS, which we now know, the bottom line here is, that this dossier, which was presented to the American people, which was presented to President Trump as intelligence, as reliable intelligence, was nothing more than opposition research bought and paid for by the Hillary Clinton campaign and the Democrat National Committee. They paid a guy to make this stuff up. It is not intelligence. There's not a shred of it that's true. It never has been true. But look at how it was used. Look at everybody who went along with this. The CIA director, John Brennan, informed the world that this dossier formed the basis of his investigation into whether or not Trump had colluded with the Russians to steal the election from Hillary Clinton. The CIA director said that it formed the basis of his investigation. The director of national intelligence, James Clapper, working for Obama, ditto, same thing. 
We were deeply troubled by the contents of this dossier, and it formed the basis and the foundation of our investigation. The FBI, James Comey, used this dossier as a basis and foundation for this entirely bogus, nothing to it, investigation of Trump-Russia collusion. Adam Schiff on the House Intelligence Committee kept citing it. The media kept citing it. Everybody. It was all over Washington all last summer, two summers ago. Nobody would run it because nothing in it is verifiable. BuzzFeed, which is a unit of NBC Universal, decided to go ahead and publish the whole thing in its entirety with caveats. Sorry, we can't confirm anything here. There's not one element of this that's verifiable, but we think you have a right to know and make up your own mind. Once they did that, and once it was news that Trump had been shown this, the floodgates opened and this thing became reported on as though it was legitimate intel, folks. This is not an insignificant thing. The director of the CIA during the Obama administration proudly, happily said this dossier formed the basis of his investigation. There was no dossier. It's nothing more than made-up drivel bought and paid for as opposition research by Hillary Clinton and her campaign and the Democrat National Committee. They treated it as genuine and legitimate intelligence. Did they secure FISA warrants to tap and investigate people on the basis of this opposition research? They tried to pass opposition research off as legitimate intelligence. I cannot emphasize that enough. For over a year... People have been told that the contents of this dossier, which contains the story of the golden showers, this is where Trump found himself in Moscow and was told that he and Melania were staying in the same hotel suite that Barack and Michelle Obama had stayed in. And so the dossier, among other things, claims that Trump called some prostitutes over and had them urinate on the bed. This dossier also said that one of Trump's lawyers had had a secret meeting with Russians and in the Czech Republic, I believe, and it was later learned that this guy has never been in the Czech Republic, and it was easily refuted, but this never went away because the drive-by media and the Democrat Party and the Obama administration were in cahoots to use this to try to get Donald Trump impeached and thrown out of office and have his election questioned, and it was not intelligence. It was opposition research. It was bought and paid for by the Democrat Party via Fusion GPS. There's also another connection. You know, when the Democrat National Committee servers were uh, hacked, you remember the DNC would not let the FBI forensically examine the server. Instead, they hired CrowdStrike to do the forensic examination. It turns out that CrowdStrike was also hired by the law firm that hired Steele, that hired Fusion GPS to make up this dossier. All of this is Democrat Party, Hillary Clinton, and Obama administration opposition research. All of this is lies. All of this is patently made up. Oh, there may be a sentence or two in the dossier that's got some connection to something that happened to give it some sense of, of credibility if deeply examined. Look at what this has led to. It has led to the investigation of Jared Kushner and Russia. It has led to the investigation of Trump and Russia. It has led to, it has formed the basis of the investigation of all of these people, Donald Trump Jr. and Russia, Paul Manafort and Russia. By the way, there's an update now. On Manafort, it turns out that the Mueller investigation, according to the latest leak, is not looking at Manafort's roles and actions on behalf of Trump, but rather on, half of, on behalf of some Democrats. But, my friends, all of this is BS. 
It is literally toxic BS. John Brennan, the director of the CIA, said it was the basis of the CIA's investigation into whether Trump colluded with Russia, for which there still is no evidence, for which there will not be any evidence, because of it didn't happen. Hillary Clinton and her campaign, by the way, one of her spokesmen, Brian Fallon, was on CNN today, and he was asked point blank if Hillary knew. He said, I don't know. This begs another question. Why are the Washington Post and New York Times all of a sudden dumping on the Clintons on this? I have a theory to explain that, but I'll get to that in due course. Well, in short, I'll tell you, they want to continue investigating Trump. And when they find evidence that the Clintons have actually done what Trump has done, they've got to get rid of somebody in order to justify pursuing Trump. But I'll get into that in more detail in due course. These people, John Brennan, James Clapper, Adam Schiff, the Hillary Clinton campaign, these are not public servants. They are vicious partisans. They feel so entitled to power that they feel freely capable and entitled to actually ruining people in the pursuit of their power. They are so entitled to it that they think it's nothing to literally lie and destroy and ruin people in order to get what they believe they are entitled to. They have no sense of fairness. There is no sense of duty here. Have you noticed the swamp's not all that upset about this? Have you noticed that? To the swamp, hey, you know, politics as usual. Get used to it. Suck it up. Be like Bush did. Just take it. I'm sorry, folks. I can't take it. And it's not because I'm offended what they did to Trump. I'm offended at how they lie to me. I'm offended how they lie to you. I'm offended at the very actions they have taken here. Corrupting the CIA corrupting the Office of National Intelligence, corrupting everything they touch in pursuit of their own power while lying to everybody about somebody else. Donald Trump and his family and people he worked with, look at the people whose lives have already been damaged by this. Michael Flynn, Jeff Sessions. Yeah, he's still Attorney General, but he's damaged. All of this was done after a knowingly false bit of political opposition research was treated as legitimate, serious, worldwide intelligence. Let's not forget Senator McCain. Senator McCain, when he heard about the Trump dossier, was so excited. He just had to have a copy. He dispatched an emissary to the United Kingdom to pick up a copy and bring it back to make sure everybody in his orbit knew about it. Jeff Flake is not the news today. What Jeff Flake said or is saying about Donald Trump is not the news today. The fact that a guy in Arizona is so pathetic that he can't get reelected and wants to blame it on Trump and goes to the floor of the Senate to whine and moan about the behavior of the president is not the story. The story is the Clinton campaign and the Democrat National Committee created out of thin air phony fake intelligence passed it off as intelligence. It was treated as intelligence. It was acted upon as intelligence. People were investigated because of it. People had to hire lawyers because of it. People have had their homes raided pre-dawn by SWAT teams over a fake opposition research document prepared by Hillary Clinton, the Democrat Party, and the Democrat National Committee that we were told was legitimate intelligence. And there are a lot of people on our side who believed a grain of it could have been true. I have also been stunned, and I mean stunned, 
to learn during the course of all this that there are some people who voted for Trump, who are eagerly still pro-Trump on our side, who thought there might have been something to this. Because Trump's win was so unexpected. It was so unusual. What could possibly explain it? With the media talking about this for hours every day for over 365 days, it couldn't but help make an impression on some. My gosh, they won't stop talking about it. There must be something to it. There was nothing to it. There has never, ever been anything to it. It has never, ever been anything but totally fraudulent, fake, made up. And the evidence to back this up was long available in that book written about the Clinton campaign where this plot was hatched and it was openly written about in that book. Just count the people that they have tried to destroy over this document. It may be, if you ask me, it may well be that the Golden Showers dossier, the spying, the unmasking, let's not forget Samantha Power, let's not forget Susan Rice, all of the unmasking of Americans overheard in wiretap conversations on the basis of this dossier, which the director of the CIA said numerous times formed the basis of his investigation. That opened the floodgates for unmasking Americans, investigating Americans, accusing Americans by name, by anonymous sources, in the New York Times, in the Washington Post, in a giant case of opposition research disguised as real intelligence. This phony Russia collusion scandal, Uranium One, the unmasking, may be all connected. At least we know that it all traces back to the Democrat Party. None of this traces back to that supposed ogre in the White House. This traces back to that mean-spirited, extremist, partisan, radical ogre named Hillary Clinton and her husband Bill and every associate of theirs in that campaign and the Democrat National Committee. The President of the United States is involved. Barack Hussein Obama, it was his CIA director, it was his administration treating opposition research. Bought and paid for opposition research as le legitimate intelligence. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, the FBI directors, that would be Robert Mueller and James Comey. A special counsel, that would be Mueller. A Democrat nominee for president and her husband, the Clintons, a former president, are all involved in this. And one of those former FBI directors is investigating who? Donald Trump? While all of this we learn? This is one of the biggest bombshell revelations in my memory. Let me ask you a question. If the news had broken that Donald Trump had hired someone to forge a Barack Hussein Obama birth certificate showing him born in Kenya after a year of claiming something other than that. Do you think you'd know about it? Do you think the cable networks, the news networks would be talking? Do you think it'd be front page New York Times if uh, that kind of slanderous, fake, phony stuff had been presented as intelligence learned and used by the CIA, damn well it would. This, to the swamp denizens, hey, politics as usual. Washington's a nasty place. Nothing to see here. Welcome back. Rush Limbaugh, America's real anchorman. Fastest week in media already Wednesday here. Happy to have you along. Look at all that's happened. Look at all of the phony congressional, Senate and House investigations over nothing. Remember, folks, it is crucial to remember that the Trump dossier was used as the primary evidence. And we know that it was simply made up. It is nothing but lies bought and paid for by Hillary Clinton. Look at what 
the Washington establishment did with knowingly false and made-up information a year of phony congressional investigations, a year of unmasking completely innocent people and trying to destroy their lives. A year of phony, fake, lying news reports with quotes from anonymous sources in the deep state attempting to back up the lies and the made-up drivel in the Trump dossier, which again, the CIA director John Brennan touted as the basis the foundation of his agency's investigation into the allegation that Donald Trump colluded with Vladimir Putin to steal and tamper with U.S. elections. Look at the money that has been spent on investigating elections and voting machines in various states and precincts. All of it a scam. All of it a giant sham. All of it totally made up to carry out the notion that this was something real when it was not. After Donald Trump's stunning upset, the great unmasking began. A Russia collusion fiction was dreamed up by Hillary's team, as noted in the book Shattered. They were to pin this collusion on Trump, perhaps a drum Trump out of office even before these scandals were uncovered. The Obama Department of Justice was about to be turned over to Donald Trump with all of this having happened, and therefore all of this simply awaiting discovery. You remember when Hillary Clinton apologized to President Obama whenever she conceded? It was either election night or the next day. I always thought, that's a strange thing. Why is she apologizing to Obama? She lost. He went out there and campaigned for her and probably inflicted as much damage on herself as she did. Why was she apologizing to Obama? Had to be about more than simply losing. Because Hillary had bought and paid for a pack of lies that was then presented as real intelligence. And the Obama administration had accepted it and acted on it as such. Hillary Clinton had thus opened the Obama administration to multiple investigations, which are ginning up right about now. And the truth is going to come out about this. And that's why the New York Times and the Washington Post look like they're willing to throw the Clintons overboard after all of these years. Why now? They have known this thing was a pack of lies, folks. Now, there may be some drive-by journalists who got sucked into it and believed it. I probably think that's true because so many people on our side did not have the strength to resist it day in and day out. I just want to tell you, just for the, for the record, that I never bought a word of this. In fact... Grab audio soundbite number one just to demonstrate. It'd be easy for me to come here and claim something. Audio soundbite number one, January 12, 2017, uh, nine days before Trump is inaugurated, eight or nine days, and this is what I said. Do not ever doubt me when I tell you that everything in opposition to Trump is going to have its roots to the Democrat Party, to one of their think tanks, to one of their groups, to one of their institutions, to Hillary and Bill Clinton. It's inescapable. And here we have the Trump dossier now linked and created by, on the orders of, with payments from, Hillary Clinton's campaign and the Democrat National Committee. And again, Brian Fallon, who worked in that campaign for a year, when asked, did Hillary know? I don't know. That's not normal Clinton behavior, procedure. The procedure is to defend the Clintons to all ends and say, hell yes, she didn't know. Are you kidding? There's no way she would have sanctioned this. Don't insult me by asking me again if Hillary Clinton knew. Of course Hillary Clinton didn't know. That would be the answer. Now Brian Fallon's saying, I don't know. I don't know if she knew or not. After the election... 
The FBI, this is from the Washington Post story, after the election, the FBI agreed to pay Christopher Steele, the actual author of this pack of lies, after the election, the FBI agreed to pay Christopher Steele to continue gathering intelligence about Trump and Russia. This is outrageous. This is so beyond the pale. This is so beyond Watergate, folks. James Comey, Robert Mueller, the FBI, they knew that it was made up. Everybody in this chain did. I will not believe that Hillary was able to fabricate a document with these players and that the FBI thought it was real and that the CIA thought it was real. These people are too partisan, they're too vicious, they're too power entitled, and they're too willing to destroy people to keep their power or get it back. I don't believe for a minute that anybody in this chain actually thought any of this was real. It's too outrageous. Hiring prostitutes to urine on a bed, that's Bill Clinton, Harvey Weinstein stuff, not Donald Trump. Harvey Weinstein and Bill Clinton do that kind of stuff. And their buddies and their crowd, their people they run around with do that kind of stuff, not Donald Trump. I don't believe for a minute that Brennan or Clapper or Comey or Mueller actually believe this. In fact, when Comey presented it to Trump, he presented it as largely made up, but it's an example of what you need to know can be said out there about you. But look, after the election, the FBI continued to pay the FBI, the nonpartisan, the holier than thou. We're just going to get the bad guys, ma'am. Thank you. We don't care who's running the country. Republican, Democrat, doesn't matter. We're going to get the bad guys. Really? The FBI agreed to pay Steele, the author of the lies, to keep gathering intelligence about Trump and Russia. There wasn't any to gather. He was being paid to continue to write lies. But the FBI pulled out of that arrangement after Christopher Steele was publicly named and identified in news reports. So once sunlight was shining on it, the FBI threw Steele overboard. And they said, you know what, Christopher? We've got enough. Just can it. Since everybody knows who you are and what you're doing, you need to get out of here. And they let him go. Christopher Steele, MI6, British Intel, received money directly and indirectly from the Clinton campaign and the DNC. And the FBI, which at the time was run by James Comey, who extricated Hillary Clinton from legal consequence after she violated the Espionage Act thousands of times. Remember that July 5th press conference? I just can't find where she intended to violate the law this much, and so no reasonable prosecutor would ever bring charges. A total crock that people relied on because of Comey's unassailable reputation for propriety and fairness and decency when in fact the FBI played a serious role in treating this gunk as legitimate intel ask yourselves and your memory for the past year Whenever you would see news about the Trump dossier or anything about collusion, remember, it was rooted in real intelligence, right? And the New York Times and the Washington Post had all of these stories day after day after day. Anonymous sources deep, former and current intelligence agency experts. None of them ever named, none of them ever identified, but the press ran sometimes with just one source. And every story had to bury a sentence or two saying, to date, no evidence has been found to confirm the allegations. There never was going to be evidence found because this entire thing had been made up. They simply started writing law lies and untruths to make it look like the product of intelligence gathering. 
to me, as a non-denizen of the swamp, this may be the scandal of all scandals. And I know, as I say, that a lot of people on our side actually thought there might be something to this because they were likewise so shocked that Trump had won and because the news was relentless. You know, people say, yeah, Rush, maybe, but not every day. I mean, they wouldn't openly lie every day about it. Yes, they do, not would. Yes, they do. It isn't news anymore. So I know you're asking, well, then why do we know it now? Aha. Uh-huh. That is a fascinating question. Why have the Clintons and the DNC, by the way, the people running a DNC today are not the people who ran it when this was all happening. So why are the Clintons and the former regime at the DNC, why are they being thrown overboard? One of the answers is because they think everybody's going to weather the storm. That nothing's really going to be done here couple of bad days maybe in the media and after that we'll move on we'll get back to jeff flake and by that time there'll be another republican senator stand up and say what an ogre trump is so they'll be able to cover this stuff up well they're not going to be able to hear it's not going to get covered up here still a lot of people on our side do not yet to this day understand the media runs Washington, D.C. They do not understand that the media runs the Democrat Party. They do not understand that the media is not about news anymore. Anyway, let me take a brief time out. We'll come back and uh, and continue. I, I purposely started with my reaction to this. When we get back, I'm going to give you some of the details actually found in the story in the uh, in the Washington Post. I chose to go at this... Uh, in reverse order, because I don't, th- I couldn't have waited 45 minutes. Because I, 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 folks, I am so outraged, livid, angry about this. I'm doing my best to contain it, but this stinks. This, this, this is, this is just. You, you, you combine this with Mitt Romney not caring that some employee's wife died cancer, and he put the dog on the roof of the station. Just everything you can think of. Everything these people have done to destroy the war in Iraq and destroy George W. Bush, and there was not any pushback by the Republicans on any of it. Everything they have done and continue to do to try to destroy Donald Trump and in the process destroy the people and their dreams of people who voted for Trump. Uh, this is not... Gee, this is typical Washington rush. Get a, no, 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 no. It may be, but it's time it stopped. It may be typical Washington, and it's time people got fed up to the point of not taking this kind of crap anymore. Welcome back. Rush Limbaugh, your guiding light. Hillary Clinton's campaign, DNC-funded Trump dossier. Here is what you need to know. The bombshell report in the Washington Post came just days after Hillary Clinton told C-SPAN that Trump and Fox News were trying to distract the nation from the real Russian ties between Trump associates and real Russians. You know how Trump did that? Do you remember what Trump did? Trump just a couple of days ago blew this wide open by asking, who paid for this? You people in the media, who paid for this? Did Hillary pay for this? Did DNC pay for this? He was right on the money. Who paid for this? Donald Trump broke this wide open, and it, it was just days before that Hillary Clinton told C-SPAN during a book interview that Trump and Fox News were trying to distract the nation from a real Russian ties between him and the Russians. So here's what you need to know from the Washington Post report. Mark Elias, an attorney who represented Clinton's campaign and the DNC, used Fusion GPS to conduct quote-unquote research on Donald Trump. In other words, there's no intelligence agency here. There's no CIA, DIA, there's no MI6. They hired Fusion GPS, Democrat operatives, to conduct research on Trump as a candidate. According to sources, Fusion GPS hired former British intelligence official Christopher Steele to write the dossier. Still no intelligence gathering. Mark Elias 
retained Fusion GPS in April 2016 on behalf of the Clinton campaign and the Democrat National Committee right before Trump became the presumptive nominee, and they were paid all the way through the end of October 2016. Prior to working for the Clinton campaign and the DNC, Fusion GPS began researching Trump and was funded by a still unknown Republican client. And nobody knows who that is yet. But there's a Republican in this mix that joined the effort to create lies about Donald Trump. It's still unknown how much was paid for the dossier. The Washington Post says the Clinton campaign and the Democrat National Committee paid Mark Elias's law firm, which is Perkins Cole, a total of $9.2 million from June of 2015 through December 2016. The Washington Post claims that neither the Clinton campaign nor the DNC directed Steele's activities, who then shared some of his findings with officials at the FBI. After the election, the FBI agreed to pay Steele to keep gathering intel about Trump and Russia based on a fake, made-up dossier. But the FBI pulled out of the arrangement after Steele was publicly identified in news reports. That's basically a summary of what the Washington Post reported. You'll note there's nothing in there but Brennan. There's nothing about how they relied on this as the basis of an investigation. None of that's in there. Snurdly chastising me for calling it opposition research. That's why I started calling it lies. Opposition research is when you dig for stuff that's true and that the candidate's trying to hide. This is just totally made up. There's no oppo research. It's just, that's the convenient term for it. Hang on, just leading, uh, reading some late arriving intel. Uh, welcome back, folks. It's Rush Limbaugh here on the cutting edge of societal evolution. You know, right before the end of the first hour, Snurdly made a good point. He said, you, you need to stop calling it, well, he didn't say it this way, but this is what he meant. You need to stop calling it opposition research because opposition research can be genuine. It's the... It's the investigation of stuff that's true about somebody that they've been trying to hide. And you find it and release it at a opportune time. And that's true. I mean, uh, one of the uh, countless examples of it, but a great example of opposition research that almost worked was the Bush DUI on the eve, the Friday before the election in 2000. A Bush uh, family, obviously, a DUI, uh, it doesn't get public at the time. Fine, you, you hope it stays hidden. The Democrats found it. And they saved it, and they used it, I think it was the Friday before the election. It wouldn't, you know, not enough time, not much time for the... I'll tell you what, opposition research is the, is the, uh, the Trump uh, NBC Access Hollywood video. NBC News had that for how many years? They had it for how many years? And they would, they would never use that until... I'm sure they never had any intention of ever using it. In fact, I'll bet you what happened on that. They have the, the, the videotape of Trump's appearance on the show, and it's somewhere in the archives, long forgotten. And then years later, Trump runs for president. And somebody at NBC says, wait a minute, wait a minute. I remember we've got something somewhere. What were Trump's talking about? Whatever. So they search for it, and they find it in their archives. NBC didn't use it. They gave it to the Washington Post. Remember? The Washington Post broke the story on the Trump Access Hollywood video. That's another example. <clears throat> Use me of opposition research. That's not what this is. This is not opposition research. This is just the manufacture of complete BS. This is total front to back, top to bottom, beginning to end lies. And they were paid for. This was a scheme that was hatched by the Clintons and the Democrat National Committee. This is, this is, folks, I, 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 I'm not convinced myself yet that I have really made the impact that this needs. 
because of what happened after this. This is a totally, totally, totally manufactured, however number of pages this is, I forget, it's either 36 or 39 or 16. It contains the golden shower story. The fact that this was literally written as fiction. Look at what has happened. Look at how it has been used. All you really need to know is that the director of the CIA, an Obama appointee, John Brennan, who is a classic, extreme, community-organizing-type leftist, proudly, happily told everybody that this dossier was so crucial, so important, that he used it as the basis of the investigation. Folks, that means there has never been any evidence of Trump colluding with Russia. Now, balance that fact with everything that's happened in the past year in the news media. This this dwarfs Watergate in ways that I can't even categorize. This has so many players involved who knew that this was phony. But for the highest investigatory intelligence agency in the world to knowingly accept pure fiction and use it politically. See, it doesn't surprise me. This is who Obama is. This is right out of Saul Alinsky and, and, and Rules for Radicals. This is exactly how community organizing works. You populate these places with your fellow extremist radicals and you turn them loose. And everything they touch ends up being corrupted. The CIA, the FBI, this story, I guarantee you, Jim Kallstrom, who ran the New York office of the FBI for years, this is going to, it's going to come, it's going to combine to devastate him and infuriate him like you can't believe. The, the FBI is sacred to people who have devoted their lives to it. It's sacred in its mission. And to have this, this is not just a mistake. This is not somebody getting fooled. This is, this is not Comey and Robert Mueller being fooled by any of this. This was knowingly used to help deny a duly elected president his victory. And then after he was inaugurated, it was used for the express purpose of driving this duly elected president out of office. And it encompassed the United States Congress. It encompassed the Office of National Intelligence, run by James Clapper. It ensnared the CIA and the FBI, or rather the FBI and the CIA used this to ensnare all of these different House and Senate investigating committees. And, of course, the drive-by media. Now, meanwhile, real election rigging took place on the Democrat side. Hillary against Crazy Bernie. Real hacking of a computer and server happened on the Democrat side at the Democrat National Committee Network, for which they would not allow the FBI access to forensically examine. There was actual hacking and chicanery, and it all happened on the Democrat side. It, it, it happened to Democrats, and Democrats made it happen to others. Now, Fusion GPS. The Republicans hired him, too. The GOP paid, paid Fusion GPS to uh, look at Trump's business casinos, Atlantic City. It didn't go anywhere. Little stories would crop up time to time. Hillary talked about Atlantic City, tried to make it stick. Nothing did. All the primary candidates knew about Fusion GPS. They were wide out in the open what they were doing. Hired by Hillary Clinton. 
whatever the Republican, whatever the GOP accumulated that Fusion GPS produced for them was passed off to Clinton after Trump beat the Republican field. This has been a combined effort by establishment Democrats and Republicans using every branch and administration of government they can to destroy one man who won a duly elected campaign. Look at look at Jeff Sessions. Now I'm I'm gonna I have to do this. I have to steal the thunder. We have a caller waiting. In fact, let me take the call. It is line two. It's James in Cleveland. It would be devastating if I mentioned this and this guy's been on hold for an hour and wants to talk about it. So James in Cleveland, welcome to the program. Great to have you, sir. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. What are you gonna say? Uh, I, I think it's time for Jeff uh, Sessions to recuse his recusal of the Russian investigation. Because with this dossier being uh, opposition research or lies, then it, there's no basis for his recusal anymore. You would think. A great point. A point that I was eventually going to... I've even gotten some emails. Why haven't you mentioned Sessions? You, wait, I can't believe you let that get... I can't do everything in the first hour. Now, it is a relevant question to ask. Why, why did Sessions recuse himself? Do you remember, do you remember what led to this, folks? Because I do. I remember every damn element of this because I have, I've been fuming about it since it began. Jeff Sessions, who for the life of me, I don't understand why he didn't suspect what was going to happen to him in his confirmation hearings. Al Franken, a genuine mental midget, went after Sessions on a bunch of bogus hearsay and tried to make something sinister out of Sessions having been at a cocktail party where that fat Russian ambassador was lurking. Sergey Lavlov. This was this guy was lunching with everybody. He's the only Russian anybody can find in the Russian collusion scandal. And he's meeting with everybody. And so he and Sessions rubbed shoulders at one of these typical Washington cocktail parties that a think tank throws before one of their scholars presents some presentation that only 10 people in America could possibly understand. And Sessions didn't remember it. And so Stuart Smalley is zeroing in for the kill. And Sessions, I, I, I don't remember. So I don't, it, it turned out he was there. And so because he had rubbed elbows with Sergey Lavlov, he felt it necessary to recuse himself from the Russia investigation. Because there was also an allegation that as a surrogate spokesman, a supporter of Trump's on the campaign trail, that somehow him ending up as attorney general and overseeing anything involving the Russians would be illegal. It would have a sense of impropriety. So Sessions, who is just overflowing with honor and decency, recused himself before talking to Trump about it. Trump was livid. I... I I was livid. There was no need for Sessions to recuse himself. And because he did, we now have Mueller. Well, not because he did. I don't want to lay that off on, on Attorney General Sessions. But the point is, his recusal was totally unnecessary because it was it was done on the basis of made-up BS. I so want to use the words that BS stand for. I just, I, but I'm not going to because of a sense of honor and propriety here. But I'm telling you, this, this is so beyond the pale. So Jeff Sessions has no business being recused. If anything, if anything, President Trump has now more justification than ever for firing Mueller. Mueller was in on this as the previous director of the FBI before Comey. During the Obama administration. In fact, Holman Jenkins in the Wall Street Journal, the FBI's political meddling. Mueller is the wrong sleuth when his ex-agency so tangled up with Russia. Yeah. 
That's a good way to put it. Trump isn't tangled up with Russia. Hillary is. Not just with faking this dossier, but also with the uranium story. There are people in bed with the Russians. There are people that took Russian money. There are people that personally were enriched financially from an arrangement with the Russians. Their names are Bill and Hillary Clinton. Not Donald Trump, Jared Kushner, Donald Trump Jr., Melania Trump, Ivanka Trump. They have anything to do with this. So Mr. Jenkins begins his piece, let's give plausible accounts of the known facts and then explain why demands that Robert Mueller recuse himself from the Russia investigation may not be the fanciful partisan grandstanding you imagine. Meaning it wouldn't be partisan at all to get rid of the guy now. He's tainted. He's been investigating no crime with no limits on money or investigators on the basis of something that was entirely made up. The Trump dossier. You still cannot turn on cable news and guarantee that you will even see this story. But when you do, nobody will tell you. You're not going to, you're going to see the dots connected. You're not, you're not going to, they're not going to go back and show you the video clips of Brennan saying that this formed the basis of investigation because they, in the swamp, I think and I, halfway even at Fox News, some of it, it's not that big a deal. It's just typical Washington. It's just the way it works. Well, I, I'm not in Washington. I don't live there and I don't accept that. I just, I just, that's not near enough an explanation for me. And not that I'm anybody. I'm looking in the grand scheme of this. I'm a nobody like we all are, but it's just infuriating. And meanwhile, they can't stop praising Flake. They can't stop praising McCain because they're running around talking about what a reprobate Donald Trump is. And nobody's talking about what a reprobate Hillary Clinton is. And nobody's talking about what a low rent actor Bill Clinton is and this whole gang. And to focus on Donald Trump as somehow being unfit for office after we learn this kind of stuff goes on, paid for and made up and written by Hillary Clinton and the Democrat National Committee, and they want to tell us Trump's the guy who's unfit, and they want to try to tell us Trump is uncivil, and Trump doesn't have the proper decorum, and Trump doesn't have the decency to serve in this office, Jeff Flake and McCain and all these guys who did nothing but lie in every campaign to their constituents in order to get elected. Wait till you hear, I've got a list of things Flake voted for. We're going to compare those to the way he campaigned, and we're going to learn that Jeff Flake losing the Senate is a net, or leaving the Senate is a net positive. Let me go back to the phones here because people have been waiting a while, and I have <clears throat> spent most of the first hour and a half. Here's, uh, here's Bart in Tucson. I'm glad you called, sir, and waited. Hello. Oh, thank you, Rush. Uh, I wanted to know with this unbelievable amount of corruption, the most I think I've ever seen since I've been following it. Uh, do you think this is, we finally reached a threshold where Sessions and Trump and maybe the Republican leadership are actually going to enforce the law, do a real investigation, and actually, you know, maybe indict these people responsible, fire Mueller, fire Rosenstein, uh, et cetera? Well, here's, here's the thing. Now, this, it gets... It gets tricky. Do you know, first, that it is not illegal to lie about your political opponent? Yes. That's First Amendment. And in politics, you can say whatever you want. It, it muddies and dirties the process, but therefore, to you know, indict Hillary and go legal on this may not be the way to go. Now, in terms of firing Mueller and having Sessions walk back his recusal and 
just warn everybody here that this Russia thing is being dropped. There's nothing to it. The whole thing's been made. How they want to go about doing that? Um, I've, let me put it this way. I've, I've had three people now reacting to this say, finally, finally, we may realize our dream of Hillary Clinton going to jail. I don't see that happening. I just know that. Remember, we're talking about the Washington establishment. I, 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 I just don't see her going to jail over over any of this. Uh, just that's my gut reaction. But it is fascinating. Maybe not fascinating. It is interesting to ask why. Did the Washington Post and the Hill.com drop the dime on this? Now, there are, there are stories. You know, Maggie Haberman, who is a writer for the New York Times, has a short little piece about how livid she is that these sources have been lying to her for a year about this dossier. And the impression given is, you don't lie to the New York Times. If you do that, we are going to take you out. But there's still more to this explanation than just that. Because this literally is just the publishing of these details. This is throwing the Clintons overboard. And you have to ask why. I mean, if you have any curiosity at all. While I'm on the subject of the dossier, and by the way, that's another... Calling this thing a dossier, there are certain words that trigger certain uh, impressions. Like, when they call a report a white paper. Do you know what a white paper is? Have you ever looked up white paper in the dictionary? Uh, no, it, it's not that. It's just a report. That's not necessarily true. That's not that, 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 I mean, so white paper doesn't mention any names. Where did you hear this? See, this is fascinating to me. I, I occasionally, I, I, in fact, I've been approached uh, back when I lived in New York. I, 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 drivers would hand me op-eds that they had sent to the New York Times. You need to see this. You need to see this. I sent it to the Times. You know, the Times Foreign Policy needs some assistance. I said, the Times Foreign Policy? Yes, the New York Times Foreign Policy. And I sent it to You need to see it. Another guy said, yeah, I just sent a white paper over to the New York Times. What, what do you mean, white paper? Well, a white paper. I sent a white paper. What is a white paper? What is a dossier? You hear the word dossier, you think a collection of facts or data or information on people. But calling it a dossier was intended to give it credibility as an intelligence document. This thing is just a totally made up piece of crap. It is just totally made up. I, I wish I had some more powerful way of explaining what this is. But here's some more, a couple little things about the dossier. Evidence suggests that Fusion GPS, which was hired by the Clinton uh, campaign, well, the law firm hired Fusion GPS. Clinton's hired a law firm, the law, law firm hired Fusion GPS. Evidence suggests that Fusion GPS was also being paid by Russia while compiling the Trump dossier. Now, you might say, well, so what? Well, the so what is, supposedly, the dossier is to prove Trump-Russia collusion. So if that's its purpose, then why are the Russians paying Fusion GPS to help put this thing together? What's in this that is designed to make sure Trump wins. It's just the exact opposite. This thing is to be taken seriously as an intelligence document, and it's designed to destroy Trump. Now, if the Russians wanted Trump to win, why would they play ball in this? Senator John McCain 
Republican Arizona, who was informed of the existence of the dossier separately by an intermediary from a Western allied country, dispatched an emissary overseas, I mentioned this in the first hour, to meet the source and to get a copy and bring it back to McCain so that McCain could give it to Comey in a one-on-one meeting on December 9th of 2016. So McCain's involved in this. McCain saw this, desperately wanted it to be true, and personally sent somebody on a plane overseas to go get this. In addition, Fusion GPS sent their findings, i.e. the dossier, to the New York Times, the Washington Post, Yahoo, the New Yorker, and CNN, and all of them refused to publish. You know why? Because it's bogus. There is not a single claim that could or has been verified. Not a single claim. To this day, there's nothing. But you might remember BuzzFeed did publish it. Later in the summer, BuzzFeed published it. BuzzFeed is a unit of NBC Universal. You didn't know that? NBC owns BuzzFeed. Yeah, BuzzFeed's not just this bunch of millennial, uh, super hip computer freaks. NBC owns them and runs them. That, what, do you, what do you mean, let BuzzFeed get away with? Let BuzzFeed, they supported BuzzFeed. They had to pass on it. So BuzzFeed publishes this in its entirety with caveats all over the place. We can't verify anything in this. It's been floating around Washington for three to four months now, which it had been. I've been floating around all last summer. The drive-bys were hoping somebody would run it. Finally, BuzzFeed decided, because everybody knew that BuzzFeed would be supported. BuzzFeed knew they'd be defended. Everybody knew. The deal, the silent deal was that nobody in journalism would go after BuzzFeed for doing this. Not like they went after Brian Williams. And BuzzFeed puts all their caveats around it. And then says, this is so important. We don't think you should be shielded. We think you, the American people, should see the kind of things floating around. Even though none of it can be verified, we think you deserve to know. You have the right to know. And so it got out there. Once it was out there, then it was fair game. Then the media could report on what BuzzFeed did, not Fusion GPS. They could report on what BuzzFeed, that became the excuse for reporting on it. So there are any number of ways that this whole thing was set up and used. Here's Beth in uh, in uh, Newark, Newark, Delaware. Great to have you on the program. How are you doing? Oh, very well, thank you. Um, Rush, what do you think... Um, do you think the Justice Department's going to raid Hillary and Bill's home like they did Manafort in the <laughs> middle of the night? <laughs> no, she's she she's referring to the uh, the SWAT team uh, FBI uh, invasion of the home of Paul Manafort before the sun came up, his Virginia home, and that was the yeah. the Mueller team that, uh, that that did this, and there was th- th- this. And we have learned that there is one of the, I think the number 16, uh, 16 lawyers slash investigators on Mueller's team. One of them is named Weissman. And he's a very partisan Democrat who is, has a pattern, I think, almost an identity for being responsible for these kinds of tactics against people who are targets and potential suspects, and that essentially is to concoct a SWAT team type raid on the target or suspect's home in the pre-dawn hours. Uh, nothing like this will happen in Chappaqua. Nothing like this will happen uh, wherever the Clintons call home in Washington, D.C. There's something, I, I've been looking for it here, and I, I don't know that I printed it out. I 
have run into so much since last night. I'm going to try to find it. It is that the Mueller investigation of Manafort really has nothing to do with Trump. That it has to do with Manafort's dealings with, uh, and this is where I, my mind is slipping, Democrats, but I don't remember the... Yes, right, that's right, that's right. There, The story is that the Mueller team conducted the SWAT team raid of Manafort because they're investigating Manafort's ties to the Podesta group. That would be Tony Podesta, the brother of John Podesta, who is the uh, emaciated and skeletal uh, former chief of staff for Bill Clinton. His brother, Tony Podesta, is not emaciated and not skeletal. He's quite filled out. And he was, he never has worked for an elected official per se, but he is every bit the power broker in Washington, think tanks and so forth, as his emaciated and skeletal brother, John Podesta, is. And that Podesta group, Tony Podesta's group, is being looked into and and, and Manafort, may have some involvement there, that there's no real investigation of Manafort and Trump, according to this that I uh, that I saw before the program started. Now I look at the clock and I said, we have to take another break. So we'll do it and be back. So I just checked the email during the break and I got this note. Dear Mr. Limbaugh, I want to buy an iPhone 10. But I'm reading that they can't make nearly enough to satisfy demand on opening weekend. And then I was shocked when I saw that there's going to be some available in stores on opening day. And Apple is suggesting people get there early. How can any of this be? That is such a brilliant question. And I can give you the answer. I will give you the answer in due course. But I imagine the the stick-to-the-issues crowd is upset that I've even mentioned this during. Okay, here it is, very briefly, because i got some Trump sound bites to get to. The iPhone X, the stories, the sum total of the stories is that supply will be nowhere near demand. That there may only be 2 to 3 million iPhone Xs available on launch day, November 3rd. They're having all kinds of trouble manufacturing key elements of the facial ID package. Apple's not denied this. There are numerous reports that the production is way delayed and is being very slowed down by the inability of manufacturers of the parts to uh, produce enough of them at scale. Remember, Apple needs 200 million of everything that goes in a new iPhone. So if they're only going to have 2 to 3 million on launch day, remember they normally sell 13 to 15 million in a typical opening weekend. And they're only going to have 2 to 3 million. And they're going to open in 55 countries. How in the world can they have any in the stores? It's a great question. And here's the answer. The tech media has been writing for years that people are over Apple. That no longer does anything Apple does excite people. People don't even show up anymore on launch day for phones. It's just not that the tech media hates Apple like the drive-bys hate Republicans. So Apple has the iPhone 8 and the 8 Plus. They also announced those the same day as the iPhone 10. Naturally, a lot of people are waiting for the iPhone 10, so the sales activity in the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus is not as brisk as if they were the only phones available. So... Apple, all of a sudden, after the last two years telling people don't show up to the stores, order online, it'll be much faster, now encouraging people to show up. It's a brilliant marketing move. What's going to happen? There are going to be throngs of people lined up outside every Apple store in the world, and the media is going to be with their cameras to see it. And you can't avoid the conclusion, look at how many millions of people can't wait to get an iPhone. My God, the media didn't know what they're talking about. People can't wait. They're excited as hell. They'll be camped out a week in advance. But then, when they run out of iPhone 10s in the store, which will take about five minutes, what does Apple do? Let me show you the iPhone 8, we'll say the genius, or the 8 Plus. Why, it's just as good as the 10. It has everything the 10 in it, except the facial ID. It's got the same great camera. It's got the same chip. It's got the same wireless charge. It is a perfect phone. Buy this while you wait for your 10. It's to upsell the 8 and to create the illusion, not the illusion, 
to demonstrate that people are still excited as hell about Apple. That's why. My humble opinion. Take it or leave it, but that's what I think is going on. And The iPhone 8 Plus and the iPhone 8 are awesome phones, by the way, and the best battery life of any iPhone I have ever had, and it's not even close. Now Trump. He was on the White House lawn today, and he was talking about the dossier and other things. Let's just hit the sound bite. This the fake first. dossier it was made up, and I understand they paid a tremendous amount of money, and Hillary Clinton always denied it. The Democrats always denied it. And now only because it's going to come out in a court case, they said, yes, they did it. They admitted it. And they're embarrassed by it. But I think it's a disgrace. It's just really a very, it's a very sad, it's a very sad commentary on politics in this country. Boy, is that understated. Is that understated. I, I know where that comes from, by the way. That's, that's probably some Jared Kushner advice there on how to deal with it. It's just very sad commentary on the politics of this town. Uh, I'll tell you who really we owe a lot for having this be revealed is Devin Nunes. Devin Nunes forced this. When Trump talks about a court case, Fusion GPS is in court and they're refusing to answer questions. And they're refusing to explain who paid them and all that. And they're going to be forced to answer at some point and it was going to blow. And so the Clintons are getting ahead of it. But you can't look at what's happening to the Clintons without also examining what's happening to Harvey Weinstein. We have the, perhaps the most prolific fundraiser and donor for the Democrats in the last 20 years, literally thrown overboard by the New York Times, literally thrown to the sharks. He's done. He's over. And now, Hillary, you can't look at these two without lumping them together. I think, I honestly think Hillary and Bill are going to get the Harvey Weinstein treatment before not too long. And I'll tell you why when I have more time. Here's the next Trump soundbite. I think the uranium sale to Russia and the way it was done so underhanded with tremendous amounts of money being passed, I actually think that's Watergate modern age. Yeah, that is. But so is this dossier. So, sorry. So is this phony. Op- so is this lying, salacious document. I mean, it's Watergate on steroids. Trump is, uh, he's really reserved here in that first bite. Here's more, though, from Trump on the, on the, uh, on the dossier. The whole Russian thing is what it's turned out to be. This was the Democrats coming up with an excuse for losing an election. They didn't know what to say, so they made up the whole Russia hoax. Now it's turning out that the hoax has turned around, and you look at what's happened with Russia, and you look at the uranium deal, and you look at the fake dossier, so that's all turned around. They say it began with the Republicans. I think I would know, but I won't say. Hillary would have never announced it was them, except for this great court case that's going on, where the judge was going to reveal it. They're very embarrassed by it. It's a disgrace. Yes, it might have started with the Republicans early on in the primaries, I think I would know, but let's find out who it is. What he's talking about, the Republicans, somebody hired Fusion GPS to do the same thing to Trump that Hillary did. And he thinks he knows who it is. And I do, too. I think I know who it is. But in the event I'm wrong, I've got sealed lips. But I think I know who it is. Okay. We take a break here at the top of the hour. We're going to come back. And we're going to spend some time on this flake, Jeff Flake, and the media orgasm over that that shameful, self-serving speech of his yesterday on the floor of the Senate. Sturdly, check my memory for me on this. During, during the Republican primaries, you know, Mike Murphy was working for Jeb. What they spent was $120 million and they got three delegates. What was it? Was it sixty million? Or was one hundred and twenty? It was over a hundred million dollars. And uh, that Mike Murphy spent on on the Jeb campaign. They got three delegates. Okay, greetings, welcome back. Great to have you with us, El Rushbo, executing assigned host duties flawlessly, zero mistakes. You know, I was just watching CNN during the break, and they think they're on to something. Trump at his presser 
which is what it was. It was an impromptu presser. He was out there for 15 minutes on the lawn of the White House before boarding Marine One. Uh, I think he's headed to Texas. Anyway, the info babe at CNN, Brooke Baldwin, was she was she was a little sad because Trump was happy. In in their world, Trump ought to be falling apart. In in their world, they should have Trump in the padded room now, wearing the straight jacket, uh, medicated so that he's just sitting there slobbering. And uh, they, they think they've they've pretty much uh, destroyed Trump and worn him out. So he shows up, and he's having the greatest time, and he's smiling, and he's laughing, and poor Brooke just have a trouble with it. And the thing that he said that had her the most shaken was when he said, yeah, the Republican Party got a lot of unity right now. And she has two guests discussing how stupid Trump is for thinking that there's unity. in a rep- What would McCain and Jeff Flake doing what they're doing? And let me explain this. The real definition for Republican unity is not what goes on up there, Capitol Hill, when you look at how many Republican votes did Trump get? 90% of Republicans voted for Trump. 90% voted for McCain. 90% voted for George W. Bush. 93% voted for Romney. There is unity among Republican voters. The unity among Republican voters is what's forcing a bunch of swamp denizens to leave. The reason Flake is leaving is because he can't win re-election. Jeff Flake is barely polling double digits. In Arizona, as an incumbent. So he's trying to blame that on Trump. Poor Jeff Flake cannot win re-election, so he decides that he's had enough. He can't any longer. He cannot subject himself to the kind of, of just debasement to politics that his party is now supporting. He just cannot any longer stand idly by and let this kind of terror and horror happen. And so he's leaving. And what that means is he can't win re-election. So he goes to the Florida Senate with a fiery speech blaming Trump. And the drive-bys love it because to them that's Republican disunity. I see it as Republican unity. I see it as Trump doing what he said he was going to do. He's draining the swamp. And I'll tell you this, the more flakes, the better. This is what draining the swamp looks like, folks. It was never going to be pretty. You think draining the swamp is simply getting rid of the deep state embeds? It's not just that. It's getting rid of a bunch of rhinos. Let's go through Flake's voting record, shall we? Jeff Flake presents himself as this dyed-in-the-wool conservative, does he not? He campaigns as a conservative just like the vaunted Senator McCain does. But something happens, like it does to practically all of these people. After they campaign and win re-election, they then show up in the swamp and promptly forget those things they said. A guy named Jason Johnson, who worked on the Ted Cruz campaign, or maybe in Cruz's office, put together a little list here. In response to Flake's pathetic floor speech yesterday, and Jason Johnson says, yeah, It's tempting to comment on Flake's speech, but instead, let's offer some context on his view of governing by highlighting a few of his votes. Because his speech yesterday was all about how this is, he can't stand aside anymore. He can't stand silent anymore. He simply cannot allow any of this to go on, so he's going to quit. He can't. He can't in good conscience let somebody so unfit and so barbaric and so whatever he thinks Trump is to sit there. Jeff Flake was one of 10 Republican senators who voted to confirm Loretta Lynch. 
as Attorney General. Jeff Flake voted to fund Obama's executive amnesty. Jeff Flake voted against Senator Mike Lee's First Amendment Defense Act. Jeff Flake voted for Obama's $1.1 trillion Cromnibus 2015 spending bill. Jeff Flake voted to reauthorize the Export-Import Bank. Jeff Flake voted for Senate Bill 2114, which increased Russia's power at the International Monetary Fund. Jeff Flake voted for a clean debt limit suspension in 2014. Jeff Flake was one of 11 Republican senators who voted to confirm Janet Yellen. Jeff Flake voted for the Ryan Murray budget, which lifted spending caps and raised taxes in exchange for promises of future spending cuts, which, of course, never happened. Jeff Flake voted for the Gang of Eight amnesty bill. And yet, when he's campaigning out there in Arizona, he doesn't campaign for amnesty, does he? Jeff Flake voted for the post-Newtown gun grab. Jeff Flake voted against the defund or defund Obamacare Act of 2013. Jeff Flake preferred Kasich over Cruz or Trump in the 2016 primary. And there's more. Now he can say what he wants to say. But these votes and others are why he is leaving the Senate. The people of Arizona know. You know, there's a great there's a great story here. Let me great great story, and it actually runs at CNN. It is a it's it's a column by Mark Bauerlein, who is a professor of English at Emory University. He's senior editor of the magazine First Things, and author of the Dumbest Generation: How the Digital Age Stupefies young Americans, and jeopardizes our future. Or don't trust anyone under 30. Mark Bauerlein. And the headline of his piece, Why Conservatives Aren't Buying John McCain's Trump Bashing. There is something the media must remember when it breathlessly reports on prominent Republicans speaking out against President Trump. Something the media must remember. Well, to remember it, they would have to know it. And I don't think they know it. But we'll grant them the benefit of the doubt and assume they do know it and just forget it. Senator McCain's recent criticisms, for example, are news, yeah. And so were Mitt Romney's and Paul Ryan's and all the other Republicans criticizing Trump in the past. They deserve to be reported. But viewers... And readers of this kind of news, especially longtime conservatives who voted for Trump, receive this news in a particular way. They remember. When it comes to Romney, for example, conservative voters remember 2012 and the image of him destroying Obama in the first debate and then settling back for the rest of the campaign, twiddling his thumbs, believing he had it all sewn up. They remember Romney not defending himself against Harry Reid's charges of cheating on taxes, not paying taxes, or some employee's wife getting cancer. They, 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 just, they remember Romney being critical of conservatives and trying to buy them off by saying that he was a severe conservative. Conservatives remember the phonies. With John McCain, conservatives recall every detail of the ineptitude and waste of the 2008 election. Conservatives know the stories of the infamous economic summit that McCain pressured Bush to hold in the midst of the economic crisis in the summer of 2008. People remember People remember that McCain did some literally stupid things. People remember that McCain fired a staffer for pronouncing Obama's name correctly. 
People remember McCain sucking up to the mainstream media for 10 years and claiming the media was his base. Those memories do not go away. Not when conservatives list the disasters of Obama's foreign and domestic policies. They can forgive McCain those things because they respect his military service and acknowledge his failing health. But when he steps to the front of the Trump critics, the content of his words fades and the fact of defeat stands out. People remember that McCain lost that McCain practically gave it away, that McCain was obsessed with being more critical of his own side than of Obama. And these are the things that the media never remembers. The media doesn't even have any idea how conservatives see Romney or how they see McCain. He writes here that it's hard for liberals to understand the kind of dismay conservative voters have over the failures of candidates like Romney and McCain. It's hard for liberals to understand this kind of dismay precisely because Democrat figures led by Obama and backed by progressive entertainment and media worlds have made them think history is on their side. Every time a Republican loses, liberals take it as a sign of the times not just one loss for the time being. John McCain's 2008 fiasco did not leave conservative voters thinking, well, that was a good fight, we'll get them next time. No, they thought something is wrong with the Republican Party. And so the Tea Party sprang up soon afterwards. When John McCain and other Republicans berate and chide Donald Trump, they go after a man who won while they couldn't win diddly squat. His supporters, Trump supporters, don't forget either. And American conservatives don't forget that all of these holier-than-now critics of Trump and his behavior and his mannerisms haven't one diddly squat themselves and in the process have been more critical of their own party to curry media favor. And this guy's point is the media doesn't see any of this. They don't understand any of this. And so when McCain is not universally popular among Republicans as he is in the media, they think something's wrong with Republican voters. Simply because they don't have one ounce of commonality with Republican voters. The uh, the piece goes on. There's an example here on Monday... McCain showed up on The View alongside his daughter, Megan. It was a pleasant conversation, at times solemn, and Senator McCain refused to turn it into a Trump bashing session. Liberals watched it and likely found this old statesman a noble and lovable politician. But conservatives watch it and can't help noting the inconsistencies. Senator McCain chastised the administration for not providing Congress with information about military adventures abroad, but he didn't note the problems that Congress had getting answers out of Susan Rice or Samantha Power. In other words, Republican voters remember that McCain goes after them and their own party, but he doesn't go after Obama, and he doesn't go after Hillary, and he doesn't go after the real enemy. But the mainstream media has no ability to even see any of this. So they remain totally blindsided and confused by it. The NFL, folks, big news here. The NFL thinks they have a brilliant idea to overcome problems. The National Football League thinks that ratings are on the decline because there's too much football to watch. And so the National Football League... In order to stop the plummeting NFL ratings, is suggesting canceling 10 of next season's Thursday night games. Network executives are scrambling to solve the growing problem of crashing ratings for the NFL. And they think they can fix everything by cutting games to end the perceived oversaturation of football on TV. 
To put an end to the sliding ratings, executives are proposing that fewer games may be the ticket to stopping oversaturation. One idea being to cut Thursday night football by a whopping 10 games. The idea to trim Thursday night football from 18 games a season to only eight was first reported by Sports Business Journal and was part of a plan to reverse the ratings crash. Uh, Those two moves would return 14 games to Sunday afternoons, would strengthen the core product, and potentially keep fans from suffering from football fatigue by Sunday and Monday night. So let me ask you, do you think that's going to fix their ratings problems? Do you know who has been leading this charge? See, I happen to know because I, I read everything. Do you know who is leading the charge on football being oversaturated and too much of it on Thursday night? Hint, it's not the fans. Take a quick time out. Be back after this. Some of the best names of cities and towns in this country are in Arizona. It's great to have you, Mark. How are you doing? Great, Rush. Uh, happy. Can't wait to see Jeff Flake retire and Kelly Ward take his seat. Cape Creek Dittos. Thank you, sir. Very much. I appreciate that. Uh, quick question. Uh, you partly answered earlier in the show that you don't think there's going to be any legal ramifications associated with the Trump dossier. But I was wondering whether there were actual laws broken associated with Uranium One that you feel the same way. And uh, if you feel the same way, what do you believe the outcome will be if there's actual legal ramifications associated with that? Well... <sighs> I think as a general principle, the image of Hillary Clinton behind bars is one we will not see. I I just, I I, I don't see it. However, I have a caveat here, and I did address this earlier. I don't think the timing of these things is coincidental. There's a reason why somebody blew the lid on the Clinton campaign and a Democrat National Committee, this is not the current leadership. This Debbie Blabbermouth Schultz, she's not there anymore. The Clinton campaign and the DNC and and this this hoax, this Trump dossier, or this made up thing. And by the way, I need to emphasize again, folks. This this is it's, this is not just politics as usual. This was used to ruin people. That. That Trump document, that phony intelligence, was used to ruin people. And it is still being used to ruin people. And it has corrupted the intelligence community. It has corrupted the law enforcement community. It has corrupted the news media. It is, it is simply unacceptably outrageous. It, 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 you can't sweep this away with, well, Rush, that's just Washington. I don't care if it is. That's not an acceptable reaction to this. But before this happened, the Democrat Party or the media, somebody, rid themselves of Harvey Weinstein. I don't think Weinstein and Hillary and this thing are isolated. I'll explain in a minute. Now, on this Hillary and whether there's going to be charges, investigations. Look, we've been down this road so many times with the Clintons on investigations that never happen that you know, I I don't even go there anymore in terms of, of expectations or hopes. What I do know is that there are serious people with now positions of power that run congressional committees in the House and Senate that are going to look into this. And in fact, I am not, I wouldn't be surprised if Mueller is looking into this. You know, this, this, this investigation was impaneled without a crime. So he can find whatever there is to find. And this is clearly suspicious. So I, I think I'm, I'm holding out possibility and it can happen but the way i'm also looking at this is that it's not a coincidence that after 
30 years. Folks, Harvey Weinstein has been doing what he's been doing for 30 years. And he, at the same time, has been one of the most powerful fundraisers, the Democrat Party. He has been inseparable uh, with Barack Obama and Michelle. He's been inseparable with Bill and Hillary, and especially Bill. They have been, and everything that entails, being being tight at the hip with Bill Clinton, with Harvey Weinstein doing what he does, I'm telling you. There's, he raised a lot of money. He gave a lot of money. He gave other people or told other people to spend and donate a lot of money. He was at all the official White House functions with the Clintons and the Obamas portrait unveilings. Uh, he, he was one of the ranking power people with both the Clinton and Obama administrations. And and them individually. And now look what's happened. Now the New York Times runs a story on Harvey Weinstein, and it's over. And that story opened the floodgates. And now Harvey Weinstein's finished, and he's not going to be close to anybody in politics. And he's not going to be anybody's chief fundraiser. Now there's a reason this happened. They held on to this for 30 years. Remember the... Reaction everybody had this. Everybody knew. Everybody knew. Except Matt Damon and Clooney. For some reason, Matt Damon and Clooney didn't know. And now they're asking themselves how in the heck they could have missed it. They're so confused. They can't figure out how they missed it all. And they're making fools of themselves in the process. And so, after barely a month here of wall-to-wall, Harvey is a reprobate stories. All of a sudden, we have the Washington Post dropping a dime on Hillary and the DNC responsible for this hoax that Clinton colluded, or that, that Trump colluded with the Russians. Now, the question you have to ask, why would the Democrats want to get rid of Harvey Weinstein? Why would the media, which runs the Democrat Party, the media is the power behind the Democrat Party right now. Why? Whoever made the decision to get rid of Weinstein, why? Was it was it about the pop? And it was going to be so embarrassing to Democrats and they wanted to get out in front of it, front of it and be the ones appearing to discover what a reprobate he was to get rid of it. But they wanted him gone. They don't want him associated with the Democrat Party any longer for whatever reasons. And I think the same calculation has been made about the Clintons. Somebody somewhere has determined that we got to get them out of the picture. We got, I mean, she won't go away. She keeps writing books. She keeps doing this, keep doing that. She's hurting us. She's not letting us move forward. She's not the face we want anymore of the party. We've got, if they'd have gone away, if they just trek back to Chappaqua and have their fun with the Energizer and Hillary have her fun with whoever, then everything would have been fine. But she won't go away and they want her gone. And they they think they've done everything they can to pay her back. They gave her two shots at winning a Democrat nomination in the presidency, and she botched both of them. They can't say she was not given her shot. They can't say she can't say that they denied her. She so they've they've paid their debt to Hillary Clinton, and now it's time for her to go. Now, why would that be? Well, if you look at what the primary objective is of the Democrat Party today, it's getting rid of Donald Trump. The primary objective of the American left, which means the media and the Democrat Party and academia and Hollywood, the primary objective is to get rid of Donald Trump, to ruin Donald Trump, to force Donald Trump out of office, and to also send a signal to anybody else who might try what Trump did, don't. Because of what we're doing to Trump, we could do it to you. So there's a lot tied up in getting rid of Trump. Now, if you're going to get rid of Trump, and you're going to use certain techniques, if you're going to rely on certain strategies to get rid of Trump, then it seems to me you better not have anybody on your side who is guilty of the same kind of stuff. Otherwise, you're just open to charges of hypocrisy. So if you're going to get rid of Trump on the basis that, well, he's unfit and he's dishonest and this and that, oh, my gosh, 
you've got somebody on your side that's every bit of that and more, and that's Hillary and Bill Clinton, and they're tied to Harvey Weinstein, which they can't hide. So, I mean, it's just a wild guess, but maybe one of the reasons why they are trying to get rid of Hillary is to make sure they don't have any hypocrisy problems or other related problems as they continue to go after Trump. But it may not even be that convoluted. It may just be they're sick and tired of her, and she won't take the cue to go away. And she continues to try to dominate and be the face of the Democrat Party, and they're fed up with her. They're just She's worn out the welcome. They don't like her anymore. They're just not into her anymore we'll see but something's up because that uh, something's up otherwise they wouldn't have dropped a dime on weinstein they wouldn't have done what they've done here uh exposing hillary as the (laughs) agent behind the hoax of the entire i mean this this trump russia collusion has been 99 percent of the effort to get rid of trump and they have just effectively admitted that the whole thing was a hoax. That for a year they've been pursuing things that didn't happen. They obviously want to get rid of her very badly. Nate in uh, in Fayetteville, North Carolina, I want to squeeze you in here, buddy. What's up? Uh, yeah, I just had a really simple question for you. You've danced around this topic and the answer to this question a lot throughout the show, but I'm wondering, uh, what is the solution to this level of corruption? If the top of the CIA, the top of the FBI, the top of the people that we trust to root out this corruption is corrupt, what do we out here in the real world and as voters? Ah, it's an excellent, it? excellent question. Were you being snarky when you said I've danced around it all day, but I haven't really gotten no. to it? No. Okay. No, I think it's a very complex question. No, it is. It is. A, it's have it, brought up options. No, it is a great question because we can't go in there and get rid of these people. It's a. It's a. It's a great question. Um, my first objective is to inform everybody. I think the more informed people voting is one of the many things that needs to happen to change. But look, the simple answer to this, and it is simple. Stop voting for Democrats and leftists and stop voting for traditional, tactical Washington establishment types. And even that is just a first step. But that's the bottom line. That's a really good question. Of why why spend so much time in this? What can we all do? I'm, folks, I'm, I'm not kidding. Stop. Not that you are. There's been more people. Stop electing Democrats. Stop electing liberals. As a blanket policy, it's a win-win.